Welcome, one and all. Welcome into our show tonight. We've got a great one for you, especially if you guys weren't able to watch our live videos today from the State House. I know our daytime crowd is a little bit different than our nighttime crowd. I'll be the first one to say that our nighttime crowd here at Ohio Gun Owners is a little bit more rowdy, I'd say, than uh, your average uh, daytime crowd. Um, but uh, folks, welcome in here tonight. I want to introduce you to our our guest right over here. Um, say hello to State Representative Shane Wilkin. He's going to be joining us here tonight on the Ohio Gun Owners Show. Not live, sadly. No, that video right there that you're going to see is shot from my phone today. I'm going to let I'm going to let old Shane Shane here talk to you guys in person about what's going on with constitutional carry. I'm going to play this video for you, and we're going to stop it and pause it and talk about what he's saying and what utter and complete bullshit it is. Um, and uh, let you guys see what we're up against yourselves. Um, before I do, I want to jump over and make sure that it's going live over on the OGO page, first of all. Um, this technology and we are not getting along tonight. Up there we go. Yourselves. Hang on a second. Um, but <laughs> Brandon with the early, uh, comment right there. I see my buddy, Chris Laidlaw folks. I'm Chris Dore. I'm the director for Ohio gun owners. And, uh, why don't you guys jump into the comment section? Let me know where you guys are checking in from. Of course that helps our edge rank helps this video get seen by more and more people. So Chris, Laidlaw, my buddy checking in from Geneva, Ohio. I'm checking in from our office headquarters today. I'm in Lancaster. Um, I see Ron Chesney checking in from Minnesota. Glad to have you here with us tonight, Rian. Um, But uh, yeah, let me know in the comments section where you guys are checking in from. Um, oh, and I got to get this link pinned before we go on. So if you guys will bear with me for just a moment, I am going to pin a comment really quickly. We need to have this stuff pinned um, so that people can take quick action. So give me just a moment while I get that done. Uh, say hello to each other maybe in the comment section um, and while I get this posted really quick. I should have had this ready to go. I'm sorry. Maybe next time I will uh, have that a little bit more ready to go. There we go. Got it pinned. Okay. Ooh, I'm commenting this Chris door. Um, so brief overview of where we're at uh and, and i know it kind of sucks for those of you who watch the videos regularly to have to go through this every time but we have two bills constitutional carry and the second amendment preservation act they're both in the ohio general assembly um and since joe biden took office in january or, or seized the white house however you want to phrase it um five yeah five states five states have passed constitutional carry one state has passed a robust beautiful Second Amendment Preservation Act, making the state of Missouri a sanctuary state with actual teeth. And yet here in Ohio, nothing has passed. Keep in mind, however, Ohio has one of the largest Republican supermajorities in the country, if not the largest Republican supermajority. They can pass anything they want to. They don't have to worry about Democrats. They can steamroll the Democrats. There's nothing the Democrats can do to stop them. And we've gotten nothing for it. Um, and so uh, and so, so here's where we are with these bills. House Bill 62, that's a disaster right now. We still aren't to the final language of the bill. Um, and, and I keep promising videos on this. In two weeks, I'll have concrete solid path forward information for you on this either something's going to change or we're going to take drastic measures um, but then house bill 227 our constitutional carry bill it's in that guy's right there right there um, it's in his sub it's in his committee shane wilkin there he is it's in his committee hold on i'm gonna call here no, it's just my brother, Aaron. I'll, I'll, I'll call him back. It's in his committee, this, the House Government Oversight Committee, and, it ha and it's been there since, well, he'll tell you here, 
in just a minute. Um, again, five states have passed it into law, not just passed it out of committee. They passed it out of the initiating committee or initiating chamber, the initial committee to the initial chamber, to the opposing chamber, that committee, then on to the governor for signature. They've done the entire process in those in those five states in fact two other states pass it all the way through their legislatures only to get blocked by uh the governor in nor in uh louisiana and in south carolina i think it was um and i might have that uh, messed up on the procedure there uh of as to what exactly happened um but the point is other states and republicans are delivering big time for gun owners but yet here we get nothing literally nothing even though gun owners have given them all the power they need to 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 pass whatever they want to um and you know i was talking with the state representative today and i think i mentioned this in our in our video earlier um that i wish republicans in ohio would simply act like and don't flame me for this I wish they would act like Democrats because when you think about it, when the Democrats get the votes, they go a hundred percent to the wall and they pass everything that they want. And then they let conservative groups or Republicans fight about the scraps in court. I wish our side would do that. Don't you? Don't you? I know Chris Laidlaw does. Um, so anyway, here we are. Massive opportunities in front of us. We've got massive super, super majorities uh, in the Republican side that are controlling the General Assembly. We've got a governor backstabbing gun grabber, though he may be. Right now is the literally literal best time to put a pro-gun bill on his lap because the guy is facing a Republican primary challenge, although not much of a challenge at this point. He's facing a very tight reelection, especially when it comes to his Democrat opponent, whether that's the Cincinnati dude or Dayton Mayor Nan Whaley. Um, uh, Cranley, I, I think, is a guy from from uh, from Cincinnati. Um, so all we got to do is get the bill on his desk. And old Pop Bottles is going to sign the bill. He's gonna. If he doesn't, he'll get annihilated in the general election or the Republican primary. All we have to do is get it on on the on the on the desk. That's why Shane Wilkin, that guy, is such a problem, because the bill is in his committee. And 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 I'm not gonna. I'm, I'm gonna try to not to, to defend this guy tonight, but there's. There's some extenuating circumstances here. For those of you who want to get into the nuts and bolts of this, we're going to talk about it all in this video. Um, but this is the guy who's sitting on the bill in his committee. And so I went to the state capitol building today, the state house, as they call it in Cap City. Um, well, I was going to ask quite a few people some questions, but I think people were playing a little hooky today. Um, but anyway, I saw Shane in the basement of the bit of the of the uh of the state house you know if you guys have ever been there it's kind of like a cave down underneath there um and so i thought you know what chris that guy right there that is shane wilkin that is the guy you've been talking about on your live videos chris that's the guy you've been talking about in your emails you should probably stand up and go and have a little chit chat with old shane so you know what i did i did that exact thing i went over to shane and we had a little conversation. Now, I, I got a little bit of it on video recording. We always like to be transparent here at Ohio Gun Owners. And you will see that we're very winsome in our personalities, um, at least until the, the video goes off. Um, but I wanted you guys to see, and then we're going to break down some of the, the absolute tr trash that comes out of his mouth um, for you guys. But then I'm going to give you a little a little hope at the end so please stick around for just a few more minutes here uh, as we walk through this thing i'll 
I'll play it through probably once and then I will go back and we'll slow it down and we will talk about exactly each phrase that comes out of his mouth and what it really means. Uh, we do that a lot here at Ohio Gun Owners because, um, you know, there's a real problem when you talk to politicians because when you're talking to them, something that always, almost always happens, it, it, it always happens. It always happens that their lips start moving. And when you're talking to a politician whose lips are moving, you know one thing for sure, right? What is that? When a politician's lips are moving, what is happening? Somebody jump into the comment section real quick and uh, let me know. That's right. Whoever you are who's going to do it in just now because we're probably delayed. When a politician's lips are moving, they're lying. They are lying. And so our job, knowing that, is to filter that out. There you go. Brandon was the first one who got it. Um our job, my job on the fly is to figure out, okay, how we know he's lying. What's he lying about? What's he really trying to get, get across? And how's he trying to get out from underneath the pressure? We always ask ourselves this question, especially when we're at the state house. If a politician, if, if a politician is talking to me, I always ask myself this question. If I believe them and do what they say, how will it benefit them? We always, I always ask myself that question when I'm talking with them. So, so here's what happens. I see him coming through. I decide to have a conversation with him. And right at the end or right at the beginning, I, I got it on camera. So listen to it. And then we're going to come back and kind of slow it down just a little bit. So here we go. When am I going to get my bill out of your dang committee? Well, we just got that information last week. That they asked for it. has got nothing to do with anything. Yes, you does. know that. Yes, it does. Why don't, you tell, why don't you tell the voters in your district why the leadership committee isn't pushing out what 21 other Republican states have already done? Uh, because there's going to be a process in my committee that we follow on every single bill, regardless of my... You like, like the, the committee that they did yesterday? That's not which my was committee. Boom, boom, boom. So you're going to vote no on that one today? That's not my committee. Are you going to vote no on the floor? Congress to talk about it. Okay. You've had the bill in your committee since what? March? I think so. Yeah. And you just don't do anything with it? No. I think we're working on it. Working on it by not having any committee hearings, folks. Meanwhile, Texas has passed it this year. Montana has passed it this year. Iowa has passed it this year. Uh, Utah has passed it this year. And I'm confident that we're going to pass it this year. This year? Yeah. You've got to get out of your committee first. And I'm thinking it will. Boom. There you heard it, guys. All right. We're going to we're going to watch it again here in just a second. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right. We'll, we'll just jump right into it. We're just going to we're not going to stop here. I'm not going to talk. I'm just going to jump right into it now. And for those of you, if it's hard to hear, I'm going to pause and say what just happened. Um, and if any, and if the, and if a member of, if any one of these state reps comes back and say, that's not what he said, you guys are lying and you're, you're editing the film. Uh, we'll, we'll put, pu we'll publish it straight up on our Facebook page so that anybody can watch it. Um, so, all right, here we go. As you can see from the rooftop, um, I'm in the basement and, uh, here, here it starts. When am I going to get my bill out of your dang committee? Oh, huh. I said, where are you going? He's like, headed to caucus. When am I going to get my bill out of your dang committee? Well, we just got that and uh, I said, when am I going to get my bill out of your dang committee? I, I may have been a little possessive of the legislation because we here at Ohio Gun Owners are very proud of um, the, the quality of the bills that we have and ask uh, the legislators that work with us. Um, and uh, so, yeah, our means us. My, my bill means your bill, House Bill 227. Um, well, we just got that information last week. That they asked for he said, well, we just got that information last week, and he's referring to information that they, that, that members of this committee requested from us. Now, I, let, me, let me slow down here. Well, let me, let's just listen to what I, I respond. It's got nothing to do with anything. Get my bill out. When am I going to get my bill out of your dang committee? Well, we just got that 
He's got nothing to do with anything. You know that. So he said, when it will, well, we just got that information from you last week. Um, and, and I instantly came back with, at him with, that's got nothing to do with it. And you know it. Um, because, uh, and, and so let's just, uh, I'll just tell you what the information from last week is. Um, Majority floor leader, Bill Seitz. This is the guy who derailed con uh, stand your ground law, House Bill 381 from last General Assembly. He is a smoking, drinking um, uh, lawyer who is the House Majority Floor Leader. Uh, Bill Seitz stood up in caucus last um, uh, last General Assembly and outright lied about what stand your ground law would do. He would never say anything about it publicly. He always did it behind closed doors to try to sabotage the bill. Bill Seitz. I'll tell you, let me say this very clearly. Bill Seitz, State Representative Bill Seitz from Southeast or Southwest Ohio, down by Cincinnati, all the way down there by the uh, West Virginia, no, Kentucky, where's my sneaking map? Um, Kentucky, Indiana border is an untrustworthy individual. He is not to be trusted when it comes to his explanation of gun rights laws in a caucus room. The guy is a damned liar, okay? Um, he also sits on the House Government Oversight Committee with Shane Wilkin. He sits there in committee and demands to know questions like, how much revenue will the state of Ohio miss out on if we don't continue licensing the right of self-defense in the state of Ohio. He asks questions like, um, what is the number of people that don't go in and, and get a license after a state passes constitutional carry? It's an impossible question. You cannot, you cannot know the answer to, the, to that kind of a question. If a state passes constitutional carry and removes the requirement to get a license to exercise your rights, there's no way to know how many people don't go in and continue to get the license. Okay, there's going to be a lot of those people who say, finally, I don't have to pay money or beg a tyrannical government to exercise my right as a free American anymore. Those people who don't take that action cannot be reflected in a database. Now, I think a question he might have been trying to ask at one point during those committee hearings is, what's the number of concealed handgun licenses that get issued in on a state-by-state -state basis after a state passes constitutional carry? What's the answer to that question? Now, we at Ohio Gun Owners don't get down into those weeds. The answer to that question is irrelevant to the underlying fundamental principles that constitutional carry is based on. Now, whether you like it or not, maybe you're a FUD. Maybe you're an idiot loser who loves the idea that China Joe Biden and tyrannical government should be able to license freedom. If that's you, get the hell out of here. We don't want you as part of Ohio gun owners. If you think a, that government should be able to license freedom, get out of here. We don't want you at Ohio gun owners. Go over and join Buckeye Firearms Association. They would love to have losers like you as members of their pathetic organization. Okay? We don't get down into that. Now, there are some studies, there are some news articles, there are some blog reports that would show, that would indicate that states like Arizona, for example, uh, had an initial drop in the number of licenses that they issued after that state passed constitutional care, I think, which was in 2012 or 2011. I'm a little hazy on that. Um, and then it increased right after that because more people were carrying and more people realized, oh, I want the license for reciprocity purposes. And so the number went up. We don't care what happens to that number. 
because Article One, Section Four of the Ohio Constitution, the Second Amendment to the Bill of uh, to the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, was written. Let me let me say this. I will let me say it for those of you who don't know this. These restrictions were put in place on government. Government. Government in human history is the largest killer of innocent life. Our founding fathers knew this. That's why they enshrined our rights. They codified these rights in, in our state constitution and in our federal constitution um, so that we, the people, would always be able to defend ourselves against tyrannical government, the final check and balance on tyrannical government. And so constitutional carry simply gets government out of the rights regulation business. Makes it so that if you want to, you can still go get that license. If you travel to other states that don't have constitutional carry, the goal is to get constitutional carry passed in the majority of, of uh, American states so that you don't have to go get one at all anymore. Okay. Bill cites. Coming back around here, Bill Seitz, House Majority Floor Leader Bill Seitz, the liar who lied about Stand Your Ground Law in caucus, he is not a dumb individual. I'll be the first one to tell you that. In fact, he's a good guy to have on your side if you can actually get him to agree with you because when he does, he's very competent. But he asks questions like this deliberately. He asks questions like this in order, uh, as a stall tactic, in order to derail legislation. That's exactly what he did with these other questions. That's exactly what the Democrats do on those on that committee. They ask questions in order to try to stall, block, stop, destroy legislation. That's what they do. It's what Bill Seitz does. And he's not the only one. Um, in fact, um, well, let's get back into the video. So I, so he asks the question, or so I said, when are we get, when are we, when are we gonna, when am I gonna get my dang bill out of your committee? He's like, well, you just got me that information last week. I instantly came back with him, at him with that's got nothing to do with it, and you know that he knows that he knows that poor dumb Shane just thinks that I'm dumb enough to go along with his stupid statement. So let's let's back up here and, and get back into it. Committee. Oh, we just got that information last week that they asked for. That's got nothing to do with anything. You know does. that. Yes, it does. Why don't you be... tell Why don't you tell the voters in your district why the leadership committee isn't pushing out what twenty one other Republican states have already done? Um, now I called it a leadership committee, um, and that's exactly what the House Government Oversight Committee is. In fact, uh, in in the um, in the Ohio House, the, uh, the the majority leadership team is, I think it's six people, okay? It would be obviously the speaker. He's the number one. Speaker Bob Cup, Robert Cupcake, Roberto Cupcake, whatever you want to call him. Bob Cup, the speaker. The speaker pro tem, Tim Ginter, who never does anything for anybody. Um, uh Rick Carfagna, um, who is, I think, in the assistant majority floor leader. So he helps Bill Seitz. Um, then you have a guy named uh, Don Jones. I think he's the Republican majority whip. Um, you have uh, Cindy Abrams, who I think is the assistant majority whip. That's five. Who else is on that thing? Seitz, Ginter, Carfagna, Don Jones. Cindy Abrams, there's a sixth. Um, and I'm not, I probably should have had this up and ready to go. I can find it. Hold on. Ohio House Government Oversight Committee. Check here. Ba, ba, da, ba. Who's the sixth person? I'm not recollecting. Government Oversight. Um, I'm sorry. Leadership, members, majority. Majority. I'm, I'm sorry. Hold on here. Just a moment. Oh, yeah. Bill Seitz. Bill Seitz. Duh, the House Majority Floor Leader. Um, so on this committee, the Government Oversight Committee, five of these members, five of the six 
um, members of the the majority leadership team are on the bill. The are on this committee. The only person from the majority leadership team that's not in this committee is the speaker himself, Bob Cup. He's the only person of the leadership team who is not on this committee. So as far as rank, this guy right here that I'm talking to in this video right here, he's actually way low in compare. He may be the chairman of the committee, but all the Republicans that sit there on that committee with him, maybe with the exception of, I think, Andrea White, Andrea White and uh, Phil Plummer, I think, are also on the government oversight committee. But there are five members of the leadership team. This guy can't even breathe unless leadership tells him to. So that's why I said in that video, um, let's let's hear it again. He isn't pushing out. Why don't, you tell, why don't you tell the voters in your district why the leadership committee isn't pushing out what 21 other Republican states have already done. So I'm stating to him right there. I'm like, look, dude, I know you don't sit there. I know that you can't control all the shots. Why is the leadership not doing what all these other states have done? Um, huh? What's the deal here, bro? Um, and so here we go again. Uh, because there's going to be a process in my committee that we follow on every single bill, regardless of my... You like, like the, the committee? He said, because there's going to be a process that we follow in my committee... There's a process that we're going to follow regardless of how, what do you, what do you say there? A process in my committee that we follow on every single bill. Process we're going to follow in my committee on every single bill. Now, the process, <laughs> um, and now here's where we need to stop for just a minute and explain what nearly happened today. Um, many of you, many of you agree with um, the this other legislation that's working its way through the Ohio General Assembly right now. It was introduced by the wonderful state representative Jennifer Gross. Uh, it's House Bill 248. It's it's the Health Freedom Bill. Um, in the Health Committee, they had done a lot of work to that bill and got it to a very wonderful place. Um, and people like Bill Seitz. People like Scott Lips, the big ass kisser of the entire Ohio General Assembly. He worships at the altar of Bob Cup's derriere. It's sick. Um, but these people sandbagged that beautiful legislation. And instead, yesterday, yesterday, they introduced a brand new bill. They introduced it yesterday. They had one committee, as far as I know, one committee hearing on it, passed it out of committee and sent it to the floor. Nobody, even as, as late as this morning, had seen the bill. Nobody had seen it. They House leadership introduced a bill yesterday and put and tried to put it on the House floor today. You see... They don't give two flying, use your imagination, about the process. They don't care. They don't care about the process one bit. They will subjugate. They will sideline. They will move to suspend the rules. They will do whatever is necessary and destroy procedure and process as long as it benefits them in a way that they want. Okay. And so when he, when he said that there's a procedure we're going to follow with every single bill, blah, 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 blah. The entire leadership team that sits on his committee was the same ones, the very same ones, Bill Seitz, the majority floor leader. He was the one guy and Rick Carfagna, both of those two people who sit on this committee were the same two that yesterday introduced that bill that they tried to put on the floor today. Thank God. Some people finally grew some backbone and shut that bill down in caucus today. That's a whole different topic um, that we don't have the time to get into today. But you see, the hypocrisy of these people knows no bounds. People like Bill Seitz, people like uh, Shane Wilkin here, 
They demand that we follow the process that they themselves put in place to protect themselves, that they themselves are willing to destroy at the drop of a hat if it benefits them. They create this structure. They insist on this structure because it gives them control. It gives them control and it protects them from good, solid, rock-solid conservatives from getting votes on stuff like this by getting it on the floor. Um, they just better thank God that nobody like me or like nobody like Chris Laidlaw or somebody like us are not a state representative. Because what would happen then is I'd be running amendments on every single dadgum bill. I don't care what which bill it was. And uh, saying, hey, I need my gun vote. I need my gun vote. I need my, go ahead, vote it down. I don't care if you vote it down. Just put the bill on the floor and let the people see where you are. And folks, they use the committee process for cover for themselves. That's what they do. So let's get back into it here. Let's let, let's let old Shane take it away. Regardless of my... You mean like, like the, the committee that they did yesterday? That's not which my was committee. Boom, boom, boom. So you're going to vote no on that one? That's not my committee. Are you going to vote we'll no on, on the floor? So I asked him. Um, he, he's trying to say, well, we follow procedure. We do blah, 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 you know, blah, blah, blah. So I asked him right there because what, what, what his excuse to me was we're not going to run constitutional carry because there's a procedure. In other words, I have principles. I, Shane Wilkin, have principles that I'm not willing to bend and break, right? Because your bill has to go through the process. And so I instantly pivoted over to, to this other bill that they were trying to do today. I think it's House Bill 415. I'm not sure exactly. I said, so are you going to vote no on that one? He's like, what do you say? I'm headed to caucus. We'll see what they say about it. If he had principles, if principles dictated the course, in, the course of his actions, he would have been able to say to me right there, no, of, of, of course, of course, I will not support that bill on the floor. Of course I won't. I'm a man of my word. I do. I, 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 I say what I mean. And that's uh, that's all there is to it. No, he didn't say that. I'm going to go up to caucus where the leadership team is spinning their little bullshit for everybody. We'll see what they say. In other words, I am a little boy scout and I'm going upstairs to get my marching orders from these idiot sticks who compose our leadership team. That's what he should have said. Talk us to talk about it. Okay. You've had the bill in your committee since what? March? I think so. At least he admitted that. <laughs> I'm going upstairs to get my marching orders. I said, well, you've had the bill in your committee since March. This, I'm, I'm circling back now to the process, you see, because he says we got to go through the process. But the process itself, again, remember, when they say things, if I believe them and do what they say, how will it benefit him? So you always got to be like revisiting what they say in your mind. He says we got to respect the process. So I'm coming back to that now, you see. Um, you've had the bill in your committee since March, right? In your committee since what? March? I think so. Yeah, and you just don't do anything with it. No, I think we're working on it. They're working on it. They're working on it. I say, you've had it in your committee since March. And you're not just not doing anything with it. Oh, we're working on it. Shane, don't piss in my face and tell me it's rain, Shane. <laughs> it's not my first day in politics. We're working on it. We're working on it. We don't hold any committee hearings. We don't ever do anything. We don't ever lift a finger. We never put it on the agenda. No. We're working on it. Don't lie to me. Don't lie at me. Working on it by not having any committee hearings, folks. Meanwhile you see, even there, at that very moment, I wasn't thinking about just the fact that his lips were moving, that he was lying. I was also thinking about you folks. So here, let's I, I even talked with you. Just keep that in mind. Here we yeah. go. And you just don't do anything with it. No, I think we're working on it. Working on it by not having any committee hearings, folks. Meanwhile, Texas has passed it this year. Montana has passed it this year. Iowa has passed it this year. 
Uh, Utah has passed it this year. And I'm confident that we're going to pass it this year. And there you go. I, I, I lost track of the states um, that I was talking about. Yeah, what what Chris Laidlaw just said. Yeah, that's a good one. I'll, I'll put that up on the uh, uh, up on the page. I lost track of the states there that had passed constitutional carry for a minute. So I was like, "What the heck is that other one?" Um, but uh, the, the the point I was getting ready to make to him there was, "Okay, you've been sitting on the bill for months, over half a year. It's been sitting there since March." Oh. We're working on it. We're working on it. Yeah. No, that's not work. Um, but in the meantime, all these other states have not only passed it out of committee, but they passed it out of the first committee, sent it to the floor of the House, passed it out of the House, sent it over to the Senate committee, passed it out of the Senate committee to the Senate floor, sometimes back over to the House for another concurrence vote, and then on to their respective governors. They went through all this legislative process in all these other states, five states. And yet, just not out of committee. And that's ridiculous. Ridiculous. Um, so, <laughs> you see the problem here, folks. This year? Yeah. You're gonna get out, you got to get out of your committee first. And I'm thinking it will. Boom. There you heard it, guys. And so, let, let me back that up right there real quick. I'll watch it again. Hold on. Iowa has to sit this year. Uh, Utah has passed it this year, and I'm confident that we're going to pass it this year. This year? Yeah. You're gonna get out. You got to get out of your committee first. And, and I'm, thinking I'm confident that we're going to pass it this year, folks. This—that's what this video is all about here tonight. We cannot lose track of where we are in this fight. We cannot let up off the gas. We cannot stop pressuring them day in and day out. These people feel the pressure. They know that the 2022 elections are right around the corner. They know that the filing deadline to run in Republican primaries is right around the corner. Folks, if you've ever thought, I, I, we're going to start, we need to talk about this on a routine basis. If you have ever, ever thought about running in a Republican primary, if you look at these deadbeats, and you think to yourself, I bet I could do better. Believe me, you could. Believe me. There is such a lack of, of cojones at the Ohio State House, folks. And again, the filing deadline, I think, is in uh, February. I think it's early February. If you've ever thought about running for office, your state, your country needs you now. OK, so so give that serious thought. Um, but these people know that the Republican primaries are around the corner. These people know just Josiah Lanning. He's got the date February 3rd. They 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 see these elections right around the corner. A lot of these Republicans. Now I was talking with Josiah Lanning about this earlier today. A lot of these Republicans think that they don't have to do anything. Let's play out the rest of this video. Maybe I can get rid of the screen. Boom. There you heard it, guys. Get out of your committee first. We're going to pass it this year. I think this we're year? Gonna yeah. It. You're going to get out. You got to get out of your committee first. And I'm thinking it will. Boom. There you heard I said, you got to get out of your committee first. He's like, I'm thinking we will. And so now I'm going to exit that. I'm going to stop the share. We'll go back to a full screen here now. Um, we can't stop what we're doing they feel this pressure um just i think it was josiah and I, yeah back to my point i was talking with i think it was josiah earlier today that these republicans think that that because the base is so fired up against people like lion china joe biden that they don't have to do anything for gun owners that they don't have to do anything for people who don't believe that you should trust everything that comes out of the government's mouth when it comes to these um, these injections and all these forced things and all these um, these passports and things like that. They think that they don't have to do anything on all these different issues and that the people will be so angry at the Democrats 
that they'll just get to reap all the rewards. They don't have to fight for anybody. And folks, <laughs> this ain't that era anymore. It's not. It's not. People aren't party voters anymore. They're issue voters. Because just going in there and just droning and doing party line every time, that's how we get to where we are now, where you have a whole legislature full of total deadbeats that don't go to war. Because in case you didn't know it, everybody, there this is a full-blown culture war that we are in here. The left is coming for everything. They want your souls. They want your kids. They want to destroy freedom. They don't want you to be able to worship wherever you want to. They don't want you to be in charge of your kids' education. They don't want any of this. They want to own you lock, stock, and barrel. They don't want you to be able to own your own home anymore. They want to say, you got to put this into your body. And these Republicans aren't doing anything to fight back. These people are the people we elect to fight back. And damn them to hell for not fighting. We can't, we can't let up. There is far too much on the line. There is far too much on the line to let people like this act this way. You walk around in that state house, folks, and you see the biggest bunch of idiots you will ever find. Um, you see people like Tim Ginter, the Speaker Pro Tem of the Ohio House of Representatives. You see people like Rick Carfagna. You see people like Don Jones. These people live in the 1990s. If they're not radical leftists like Rick Carfagna. I mean, that guy is as, as Democrat as they come who only runs in his district as a Republican because he couldn't get elected. Let's just, and, and not only that, but they're fleet. They, they get, they're, they're, they're getting paid a whole lot to be there. Bill Seitz, he gets 89980 bucks a year to be the House Majority Floor Leader. To sit there on that committee and stop constitutional carry, he's getting eighty nine ninety grand. Tim Ginter, this guy pretends that he is the most Christian man on earth, but I cannot imagine a more incompetent person who has never done anything for gun owners than Tim Ginter. He's a speaker pro tem. He's the second in charge. Apparently the guy's banging down almost 96,000 bucks a year to sit in that spot, to sit on that committee to stop constitutional carry. You call him up right now, get him on the phone. Well, oh, I support the second amendment. I voted for this. I voted for that. All these periphery bills that Buckeye firearms association put out, blah, 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 blah. And he's sandbagging constitutional carry massive, massive restorations of freedom that are on the line, banging down 96 grand a year to block constitutional carry and to try to do what he was trying to do yesterday and today uh, for medical freedom. Rick Carfagna banging down almost 85 thousand bucks a year don jones banging down seventy nine thousand bucks a year cindy abrams all these people sit on this committee banging down seventy three thousand seven hundred bucks a year collectively the five the five people from the leadership team the all again the only one who's not on that government oversight committee from the leadership team is the speaker himself these people are banging down 400 and these five people bang down a collective $423,000 a year, plus all their benefits and retirement, all that different stuff. 
$423,000 they're getting paid. These people aren't volunteering to sit there and suck at their job. They're getting paid $423,000 plus benefits over half a million dollars in all likelihood to block your freedoms when the radical left is pounding at the door. I don't know about you. Gets me a little, uh, I don't like it. I don't like it. So we need to hammer down. We need to go, we need to, we need to go. We need to call them every day. We need to email them every day. We need to go to their local legislative forums and ask them very publicly why, why, why when the radical left is going for a kill shot on freedom, why do you sit there and not do a dadgum thing for gun owners? The least you could do, legislators, is refund your money back to the taxpayers. If you're not going to do anything, at least resign from office. Poor old Shane, I think he only gets 67,000 bucks a year. I think he gets nine grand extra for being the committee chairman. I think amongst them all, he's probably getting the least 76,000 uh, bucks a year. Just to be a button pusher. Listen, folks, if you're like like Shane, Shane, I'll just talk to you directly right here, right now. It's not worth your soul to sit there and, and make these deals with the leadership team. This job, you can probably find something that pays more. And I guarantee you can find something that allows you to maintain your integrity. Because you know what? Probably deep down, Shane, and he's a co-sponsor of the bill, folks. He probably is pro-gun. He probably does want to see this bill. But the problem is he lacks the, the fortitude, the courage to just stand up and do what's right. Can you imagine living that way? Can you imagine it? I can't imagine it. Let me let me let me share that screen one more time here. Whoops, there we go. Look at it. Look at Shane's face right there, folks. I can see it all over his face. He knows what the right thing to do is. I know that area of of uh, Ohio down there. I've never lived down there but I've driven through down there many times. I know that his district wants him to do this. I know that he wants to do it, but folks, this is the problem that we've got. That there are people there when the time, when the, when the stakes are so high, when the stakes are so high, when so much is on the line for not just us, but our kids and our grandkids and the nation of America to follow. We need people that are that aren't sitting that that are sitting there not just like desperate for that extra nine grand. I mean, for goodness sakes, get off the committee. Let somebody else take these hits. But we need fighters. We need fighters, and folks, thank God, so many of you are fighters. Um, and, uh, you know, and, and that's another thing I was at. Josiah and I were standing outside the Ohio's Rotunda today, uh, chit-chatting for a little while. And we were talking about some of the people that we've known over the last couple of years um, here in this fight for gun rights. And how, and I was, I was making the comment, the remark that, you know, it's really hard for really passionate activists to, to keep that up, to, uh, to maintain that 100% all out, all in, all fighting all the time, you know, 
and that there's a high tendency for people to just burn out. But <laughs> that's why I'm so very glad and thankful for all of you because um, you guys are the sustaining power of Ohio gun owners. And um, um, many hands make light work. That's what Ohio gun owners is all about. You guys do a wonderful job of maintaining massive pressure on these people. Like you just heard him say, I think we're going to see something here. I too think we will see something come out of this general assembly, but it's only going to happen because of the strength of Ohio gun owners, members and supporters, convictions and determination and willing to be consistent in their deliverance of this pressure. So we can't let up. We can't give in. We can't back down and we damn sure cannot ever surrender. Because if we do, this country will be like all other old empires. It will fall. It will crumble from within um, as the moral decay of the digressive left, the communist left, as it takes over. It will destroy every facet of life that you love so much that made this country so great. If that poison of the left is allowed to sink in and starts to metastasize, we're done as a country. We're done. And those aren't words that I say lightly because I have a whole passel of kids. I can't let that happen. That's why we fight here at Ohio Gun Owners. It's what separates us from everybody else, too. Um, so that's all I've got for tonight, folks. That link is pinned in the comment section. Thank you so much for watching, those of you who are still here. Um, uh, there's, there's two things we're always asking you to do. Number one, call Shane Wilkin, 614-466-3506. Got that number memorized now. And then the email right there um, is uh, is also pre-written for you guys to just fire it off. Fire it off. Um, yeah, there's a great quote from Josiah right there. Politics and policy is a marathon, not a sprint. And sometimes it's pure combat sport. So you got to have grit. You got to have determination. But that's easy to find when you know what you're fighting for. We're fighting with you because we're fighting for the same reasons. Thank you for watching tonight, folks. Take action. Join Ohio Gun Owners at joinogo.com. Uh, share this video. That's one of the ways we can force multiply the number of people who are engaged in this fight for freedom with us. Share this video. Ask your friends to get involved. You can get our email alerts. Go to ogoupdates.com. Sign up and get our emails. We would sure love to have you on our email list because it's not nearly as censored as uh big tech is um but uh true grit you guys have it we have it we're proud to stand here with you and i'll be back as soon as i have another update have a good night